Did you know that there's actually a way to get into all of the secret doors in the Garden of Banban? They've just got secret key cards that are hiding around the map that aren't easy to find. But don't worry, I'm here to tell you where they are and what's inside of those rooms. Because I'm here to show you 10 secrets that you didn't find in the Garden of Banban 3. So without further ado, let's get straight into this thing. Let's start off with the White Room. This is the room that you can find behind Stinger Flynn when he's sleeping at the beginning of the game. It's the first door in the game that you can't have access to. And funnily enough, to get access to it, you're going to have to wait until late game to get the key card. Because you find this door so early in the game, and then you eventually talk to Stinger Flynn in the same cut sequence, a lot of people would have forgotten that it even exists. Anyway, let's fast forward to Mr. Kebab Man. You know this iconic endoskeleton looking guy? Once our brains start to melt from his voice lines constantly playing over and over again, we have to specifically stop him at this door inside the main room, and then play the voice message on his back. That's the key to activate this door on the left. He simply says open sesame. Inside that room you can find the white key card, and from here you need to take the cart back to the beginning of the game and go back to Stinger Flynn's room. Now you have access into that room, and in that room we learn a couple of things. Firstly, the name of that weird monster we had a boss fight with. It's actually got two names, Tamataki and Kamataki, respectively for a turtle and a chameleon. And this one takes the crown for the ugliest mascot that I've ever seen in my life. On top of that we learn about something called a Juvenium Cloy, which is represented by a DNA helix. It symbolizes the mixture of the two DNA types, resulting in this ugly mofo right here. Anyway, on to detail number two, the green room. Now this would have been a door that you find in the medical sector. You know, when we're performing surgery on Nabnalina. You know, by stabbing a syringe into her head. Anyway, this one is actually quite simple because you get the green keycard later on, but you just forget about the green door. The Euphoric Bros really like to test you on your memory. It's during the weird Jumbo Josh lesson minigame. You get it right at the end to end the test, but you'd forget to go back to the medical sector because there's actually no reason to in the story of the game. Anyway, once you enter into this room, you find a note which refers to this room as the prank room, and you find a cosmetic for your drone. But the weird part is this locked door and these keys on the wall. You have to press the keys in a certain sequence for the door to open, and there's no obvious way of finding out this code. But don't worry, I got you again. On to detail number three, the secret QR codes. Now this is something that's been done throughout all of the chapters of the Garden of Banban, but in this chapter they're used a little bit differently. On all of the case reports which include a QR code, if you scan them it takes you to a photo. At first glance these photos seem extremely mysterious. It's black and white and pixelated, but you can make out that it's the mascots in those photos. But if you look closely in the corners you'll also see a number. These numbers range from 1 to 6, and I think you're starting to put it together now. Those numbers indicate the order in which you have to press the buttons for that secret door in the green room. I think is a pretty neat detail. And so if we follow the order it goes nab nab, slow Celine, Ban Ban, Sheriff Toadster, Jumbo Josh, and then Bambalina. Lo and behold, you open the door and you can find yourself a note and a voice audio note as well. The note is extremely remorseful. It talks about how they've made a mistake creating this large abomination. Feel free to pause the video and theorize on who they're talking about here. And the audio note? We'll do that secret last because that's my favorite in this whole thing. So now on to detail number four, secret tape number one. I am extremely proud of myself because I actually found this secret tape on my first playthrough. And if you haven't seen my playthrough, through, go subscribe to my second channel, Erosa. Come on, man, do it for Zolfius. Anyway, once you're in Sheriff Toadster's room, go to the boss room. It's up the stairs a little bit. You'll find one of the criminals sitting on top of an office desk. If you go behind the desk and look underneath it, you'll find a switch. Once you press that switch, go to the other end of the platform. You'll notice that two platforms have appeared adjacent to you on the wall. Now you can do the hardest part, which is the jump quest to get onto that first platform. Just do a running jump, and then jump onto the other platform, and right in that nook you'll find the secret tape. If you take that tape right back Back to the beginning of the game, you'll find security camera footage into a holding room, or more like a prison room. Weirdly, it's an animal, a toad, probably the genome donor for Sheriff Toadster, who by the way is going to be in the next chapter, he's not even in this one. This is the first time we actually see a real life organic animal in the game, even though all of the mascots are based off of genome donors that are animals. Anyway, onto secret tape number two. After escaping Jumbo Josh's weird minigame, follow Bambalina down the hallway. But have your eyes peeled at the corner, because sitting on the ground is a secret tape. This is probably the easiest one to find, but also the easiest one to miss. What's also nice about this one is that it leads straight into that first room where you can play the tapes. Insert the tape and then you'll find some security footage of a room that we've seen before. It's the playground from Garden of Banban Ban 1. You know, the one where we have to find the balls and put them in Opila's mouth. That sounds so much dodgier when you say it out loud. Anyway, but this time, for the first time ever, we actually see some living children. And next to the child, you can see a white Captain Fiddles. They seem like they're 
we're playing. It's funny because at this point I totally forgot for a second that that's the whole point of the game. We're trying to find the missing children. And this is the first piece of evidence that shows us them alive. But I guess if we think about timing, this is probably before they fell down the ball pit. Or before Big Boy Stinger Flynn took them down the ball pit. We're not sure yet, it's all speculation. But anyway, let's move on to secret tape number three. This one again is in an obvious place that is easy to miss. Remember that ambush room where Opila and her husband try and get you? Head up onto this platform and look at the corner of the wall. Again, the tape is on the floor. Take the tape all the way back to the beginning of the game and put it in the VCR. And be prepared to watch the scariest of the tapes. Again, it is security footage into a holding room. But this time we've got Ban Ban in there. And he looks like he's bending over writhing in pain. But then he suddenly goes through a transformation and he gets absolutely yoked. And he slowly leans up and starts looking right at us. Right into the security camera. Like he knows he's being watched. What's more, we can see his hats have fallen off. Indicating he's in his psychotic Ban Ban form. I found this one super duper creepy because we never actually see Ban Ban go through the transformation. But what's clear is that he probably goes through a bit of pain before getting to that point. Anyway, on to detail number 7, an unused tape. So I did a little bit of digging into the game files and what I could find was an unused tape. It's right there with the video files for the tapes that we found before. Now there's a chance that I just didn't find this tape in the game, but let's watch this tape anyway. This might be one of the saddest ones. Because what we find is Bambalina sitting in a holding room. She's sitting down, slouched over with her head facing down. Definitely looking like a prisoner in this one. It's sad to think that this is the state of the mascots when they're not out and about playing. One thing's for sure, things are getting a lot darker with the mascots. And even though they're stone cold killers, when you see them in this state you start to feel sorry for them. And you see how they're also victims in this as well. The victims to those damn scientists. Anyway on to detail number 8, the stinger mobile. Now remember all those times that that big ass stinger Flynn took us into his dreams? And we were in this weird back rooms beach level. An unusual element that we kept on seeing was this orange car. What's even more unusual is that this car has a name for itself. The Stinger Mobile. In the first cut sequence where we enter the dream, if you go up to the car and jump on the roof of the car, you can see the name of the car on the bonnet. Unfortunately, the Stinger Mobile meets its demise because Stinger Flynn sucks ass at driving. He fully totals it in his own dream, which is even weirder. Anyway, on to detail number 9, Rocket Music. You know how I was talking about that weird Stinger Flynn dream where we're in the back of the Stinger Mobile. There's a portion of the cutscene where music starts playing, yeah, and it's not even that bad. Well, that absolute bop is made by a YouTube channel called Rocket Music. Rocket Music creates nerdcore songs about popular horror games and internet culture. And for the Garden of Ban Ban 3, they officially made this song called Rivals. What's even cooler is if you go onto their YouTube channel, they've got an entire music video for the song. And I don't know, after watching the music video and listening to the song, it got even better for me. I highly suggest just going to their channel and giving it a like if you like Garden of Ban Ban anyway, just to show support. You know, creators supporting creators and all that jazz, just how you guys are gonna like and comment on this video and subscribe as well. Anyway, on to the final and greatest secret detail. Number 10, Zolfius' secret voice line. Remember the audio note that we found in the green room? Well, if you take it back to that big ass speaker, you know the one we used for the spider oh, wow. union, an unrecognized assembly will be called. Head back to the void and you'll find big bro Zolfius. The assembly was calling him. And for some reason in Spanish, he says, I'm sorry. First of all, why Spanish? Did they kidnap a Spanish child and turn him into Zolfius? And secondly, what is he saying sorry about? I'm gonna put that last one on to you guys. Please comment below what you think he's saying sorry about. The best one will go into my theory short which will be posted later this week. But that's all for now, I hope you enjoyed that. You know the drill. Like and subscribe, and also subscribe to my second channel Erosa so you can check out my playthroughs. Because if you don't, this'll happen to you tonight.